Welcome back, Canonites, to a very special episode. A while back, you may remember I was fortunate enough to put together some questions and have them presented to Frank O'Connor. Well, thanks to Laird from Halo Collector, that opportunity came around again. Well, it came around a while back, but due to Halo 5's launch, 343 was only recently able to respond. I'm not saying that to complain or anything, but to hopefully explain why none of the questions deal with some of the more recent canon revelations. Anyway, this was a text-based interview, so I'll present the questions and answers, then follow up with some commentary if I feel like it. So, let's dive in. How did Black Team get back to UNSC Space following the Battle of Line Installation 1-4? It involves portals and a ship, but that's all you'll get from us right now. It's definitely a story for a different time. Sorry. Well, I'm kind of mixed here. While I really wanted a straight answer, I'm happy that this would seem to imply that Black Team's story will be told. But then again, as I'm sure I've stated before, any sort of story that would explain how they got off the line installation would have zero tension since we already know their ultimate fates. I'll always be the first to state that the journey is more important than the destination, but as much as I trumpet that in my life, I know it's not always true. Still, I do look forward to hearing that explanation, whenever and however it comes. In the first Halo Essential Visual Guide, it was noted that shield technology had been fielded as early as 2531, seeming to imply that the shields used by Red Team in Halo Wars were canon despite having previously been declared a gameplay decision. However, in 2536, Halsey's journal makes it clear that shield technology is still outside the purview of Mjolnir systems. Further, the Mark IV Grenadier armor, which entered service in 2535, is stated to have been a testbed for shield technology that ultimately proved unsuccessful. Given this, how is it stated that shield technology was being fielded in 2531 reconciled? The statement that Red Team was utilizing Skunk's Works shield technology in 2531 is 100% accurate, as well as a statement that would later say that Halsey and other folks at Oni were still struggling with it at a basic level four to five years later. Mjolnir and associated research in materials exploitation, reverse engineering, projects were extensive and far-ranging. Not even Dr. Halsey had her thumb on every aspect of the work being done or who was granted access to experimental technologies. Well, that's another disappointment. Like the decision to suddenly bring back Black Team, I've always felt the decision to canonize the Mjolnir shields in Halo Wars was a poor one. If it were only Red Team, you could at least argue that since they were lost with the Spirit of Fire, the UNSC would have had to start over from scratch. But Omega Team also had shields and remained on Arcadia when the Spirit of Fire was chasing Dr. Anders. And sure, you could say that Halsey wouldn't have been privy to every advance made on Mjolnir, but I just can't figure a reason why Oni would have made this breakthrough, implemented on a relatively large scale, then never said anything. For 20 years! It makes no sense, especially when your species is facing genocide. In the Kilo 5 books, it was established that Halsey kept the fact that she was going to replace Spartan Duke candidates with clones from Admiral Perengoski. How exactly did she keep this fact from the head of Oni? Halsey kept tons of things secret from Perengoski and others at Oni due to her own compartmentalization methodology. This was just one of many secrets. This is a question I may have to re-ask with better phrasing, since the compartmentalization explanation still has a few issues. Although, if I were to get into it, and since I've had a lot of time to think about it, the Spartan program was more directly overseen by Admiral Stanforth, so it's possible he kept the clones, among other secrets, from Perengoski. And to be fair, it does make sense that an organization head wouldn't know every detail of those working under her. Some of my bosses only recently learned exactly what I do at work. So, there you go. Speaking of Kilo 5, in the Thursday War, BB tells Halsey that he's a fourth generation AI, built by other AI. And she buys it. However, in Ghost of Onyx, she talks with Endless Summer, a fifth generation AI. How do you reconcile these two facts? Halsey was not shocked by BB's generation, but by his origin. That AIs were being allowed to manufacture AIs is something that she seemingly should have been involved in, but had not been. Another question I'll have to re-ask with better phrasing, since the book implies that fourth generation AI in general are built by other AI. To quote, Never mind, I knew it was a long shot to ask you to fix a fourth gen. You've been out of the field a long time. I'll work it out for myself. Fourth generation? Yes, an AI built by AIs. That made her blink. I've been kept out of quite a few loops, haven't I? So seriously, no matter how you slice it, BB's implication was that all fourth generation AIs are built by other AIs. Never mind the fairly large plot hole that, despite knowing a fifth generation AI during the Covenant War, Halsey was suddenly caught off guard by the mere existence of fourth generation AI in general. Look, 343, if you want to retcon Endless Summer as a third gen AI, I'm sure Halo fans would have no issue. His existence presents more issues than just this one. How did Kalmia live so long? 
she was established as a smart AI and active in 2537, but somehow still around in 2552, well over the seven year lifespan of a smart AI. One day we'll provide a more detailed explanation, but for now, this will have to do. Calmio was not a normal, standard fare AI. When exactly did the Pillar of Autumn land on Reach to pick up the Cortana fragment? During the time that Blue Team was on Gamma Station, or after those events? The times in both the game and book are accurate, one is localized to Reach and the others follow a more global MST. We'll let you speculate as to how they overlap with regard to Blue Team's op. As a not completely separate aside, legendary easter eggs are not entirely canon. For example, this might help account for some of the unnecessary constraints some folks may have placed on the order of these events. Another question I'll have to re-ask and rephrase. Next time I should include a link to my own timeline. You previously stated that nanotechnology was used to repair and upgrade the Chief's armor between Halo 3 and 4, so why wasn't the gash on his chest repaired? Or is it supposed to be that the gash was incurred during the Chief's fall to Requiem? The gash didn't need to be repaired to fix the suit. She primarily wanted the Chief functioning and operational. Plating symmetry was very low on her priority list. Kind of a cop-out question if you ask me. At the very least though, it could be argued that Cortana only had so much material to work with, so the scar literally couldn't have been fixed. But still. I previously asked about the change in the Chief's armor between Halo 3 and 4, and I fear I was poor in my wording. So, was the in-universe explanation for the change due to nanotechnology? I'm not asking because I don't like that or something, but because some fans aren't 100% clear on that. Many still believe that the change was entirely artistic, which is problematic considering that the classic Mark VI we see in Halo 2 and 3 appears in Halo 4 and 5's multiplayer, heavily indicating that there was some change to the Chief's armor while he slept. There was definitely a change to his armor while he slept, as stated in the 2011 visual guide. A variety of manufacturing and diagnostic systems were likely part of the means used by Cortana to accomplish this. As Frank noted, this kind of technology isn't a big deal for people in the 26th century, only for sci-fi fans in the 21st century. Also, the external modifications were the easy part of the upgrade. Ah, this was one I was definitely looking forward to. So there we have it, a simple quote with no phrasing that could possibly be misunderstood. The fact that the Chief's armor canonically changed between Halo 3 and 4 is still debated confounds me, but I hope this puts it to rest. While a detailed explanation remains elusive, I personally can accept this for now. As an aside, Laird had the idea that Cortana could have appropriated a medical bot that might have been on the Forward Unto Dawn, something similar to what we see in Midnight at the Heart of Midlothian or in First Strike. It's an idea, one I personally like. And that wraps up this small Q&A. My sincerest thanks to Laird for making this happen, and to Jeremy and Ken from 343 Industries for answering. I may not have liked all the responses, but if nothing else, I'm grateful for you guys taking the time to answer them. Also, be sure to check out Halo Collector, a group dedicated to helping the collectors of all things Halo. Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube links are all in the description. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.